Bitcoin City, let's freaking go. In today's show, Bitcoin may need a billion dollars more of on-chain losses before a new Bitcoin price bottom. As pointed out here, Bitcoin's 78% drawdown over the last year is its largest since 2017 to 2018, and at 376 days is now the second longest, trailing only the 2013 to 2015 decline of 410 days. And this just in breaking news, Coinbase CEO says the exchange holds 2 million Bitcoin valued at 39.9 billion dollars. Also in today's show, crypto awakening as researcher explains the Ethereum exodus from the exchanges. That's right, on-chain analytics show that Ethereum and stable coins have been flowing out of centralized exchanges in the aftermath of the FTX collapse. Also more breaking news, the Bank of Japan to trial the digital yen with three mega banks. That's right, the Japanese central bank plans to make a decision on whether to issue a digital currency by 2026. Also in today's show, central banks can use Bitcoin to fight off sanctions, according to the latest Harvard research. That's right, a PhD at Harvard pointed out that Bitcoin is an optimal alternative hedging asset for central banks. Also in today's show, Sam Bankman-Fried in a letter to FTX employees says, I froze up in the face of pressure, quoting him here in the letter, I didn't mean for any of this to happen, and I would give anything to be able to go back to do things over again. You were my family. I have lost that, and our old home is an empty warehouse of monitors. When I turn around, there is no one left to talk to. I'll be breaking down this entire letter. Also in today's show, Nayib Bokele's government of El Salvador introduces a bill to launch the big Bitcoin bonds. That's right. A new bill confirms the government's plan to raise $1 billion and invest them into the construction of Bitcoin City. I'm also going to be sharing with you a $170,000 Bitcoin price prediction as per Elliott Wave Theory. And we'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. And welcome everyone just tuning in to today's episode of Crypto News Alerts. This is podcast episode number 1112. And I'm your host, JV. And today is November 23rd, 2022. Let's dive right into today's market watch. As you can see here on Coin360, we got most of the entire crypto market pumping back in the green, which I love to see. We got Bitcoin up 1% for the day, maintaining just above $16,400. At the time of this recording, BNB, Binance Coin, is a big gainer, up almost 12%, trading at around $295, while Ethereum is up 2.5%, trading at about $1,160. We also have Solana pumping in the forest green, along with Litecoin, which was one of the top top gainers in the top 10 cryptos yesterday up another whopping 11% for the day and checking out coinmarketcap.com we can see the current market cap sitting at 822 billion dollars at the time of this live stream with 61 billion in volume in the past 24 hours with the current bitcoin dominance at 38.4 percent with the ether dominance at 17.3 percent and checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past 24 hours we have dash making a dash leading the pack up 15 percent trading at 42 bucks followed by litecoin up 11 and a half percent trading at 78 dollars Followed by Clayton up 13%, trading just above 18 cents. And below that, we got BNB and Zcash. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past week, you can see a mixture of green and red with Litecoin seeming to be leading the pack up 35% for the week and Dash up 25%. And some of the big losers are Chili's down 20% and FTT, the native token of FTX, down yet another 17% for the week. And checking out one of my favorite indicators, the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, shows we're currently rated a 22 in extreme fear the same exact as yesterday and last week a 23 and last month also a 22 in extreme fear as we have been stuck there for quite some time welcome everyone just tuning in to today's live show exciting times are amongst us Lots happening, so let's dive right into today's Bitcoin technical analysis, shall we? Bitcoin hodlers may need to triple their on-chain losses for the Bitcoin price to put in a macro low. According to market research firm Borrow Virtual, the 2022 bear market is not yet harsh enough to match its historical downtrend. That's right, with analysts predicting a return to 14000 or lower for the king crypto, the question will be where Bitcoin will bottom, which is one of the hottest topics in the space this month for Borrow Digital or Virtual. Virtual, which analyzed the data from on-chain analytics platform WellMap, it may be a matter of simple arithmetic 
<laughs> arithmetic, I guess, taking well maps, moving profit and loss MPL figures on the on-chain Bitcoin transactions. It noted that in the past, macro Bitcoin price bottoms occurred once those transactions losses were equal to or more than the equivalent profit in the bull run, which preceded them. In other words, on-chain losses need to equal or exceed the on-chain gains from the prior bull run. Otherwise, in most cases, Bitcoin has fallen Further, later on, quoting them here, the monthly MPL by well map makes it almost sure in most cases to determine the global bottom of Bitcoin, he wrote and also shared. The condition is that the current loss level may be equal to or that of the max profit level of the previous bull run and current realized losses are thus not large enough to fit Bitcoin's historical capitulation trend. It argued, leaving the door open for further Bitcoin price capitulation. How much is needed, however, could mean that the ultimate macro bottom for Bitcoin lies much lower than this week's two-year low of $15,480. Quoting them here, now the losses are $671 million and the previous max profit is from $1.3 billion to $1.78 billion. The thread continued alongside the following chart. Thus, losses from 629 million to 1.02 billion are still missing to confirm complete capitulation. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analyst. And how low do you feel this drawdown for the king crypto is likely to go? Now, the findings complement a narrative that likewise suggests that the 2022 bear market is yet to rival 2014 and 2018, years which saw the macro lows in Bitcoin's two prior halving cycles versus the latest all-time high in November of 2021 when we reached 69,000. Bitcoin has far managed a 77% drawdown, less than in the prior bear markets. Data from on-chain analytics firm Glassnode nonetheless shows how Bitcoin is gradually homing on a recess of maximum losses versus the all-time highs, which you can see in this chart. And likewise, the percentage of the overall Bitcoin currently held in profits is almost but not quite at low synonymous with Macro bottoms, quoting them here, Bitcoin's 78% drawdown over the last year is its largest since 2017 and 2018, and at 376 days, it is now the second longest, trailing only the 2013 to 2015 decline of 410 days, as the analyst shares right here. In breaking news, Coinbase has come out to confirm that they hold 2 million Bitcoin valued at almost 40 billion dollars like whoa talk about stacking those sats now welcome everyone just tuning in to today's live show i'd love to know your prediction as i'm going to be doing some live q a and reading out all of your uh predictions as far as the low will likely go for this cycle we have some analysts anticipating 10 to 11 thousand including uh toy bait uh Tone base, which I covered in a previous episode, as well as uh, the Bitcoin troll himself, the ultimate Bitcoin skeptic Peter Schiff, has been calling for a $10,000 Bitcoin price for quite some time. And many analysts are saying if we go under 14000 we can likely drop all the way down to potentially eight to $11,000, and especially if another black swan event is to occur, meaning maybe a ma major stablecoin like USD. Uh, USDT goes under, maybe another major exchange, maybe a cryptocurrency. So much could happen that is unexpected. And also Genesis and the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which I have been covering in great detail, especially in yesterday's episode, as some say they can become insolvent, which could have a greater impact on the overall macro economy for the crypto sphere. But with that being shared, now let's discuss the Ethereum exodus from the exchanges occurring in real time. Blockchain analytics carried out by Nansen Researcher has highlighted the outflows of Ethereum and stablecoins from centralized exchanges in the wake of the FTX collapse. Nansen Research analyst Sandra Leo posted a thread on Twitter unpacking the current state of DeFi with a specific fo focus on the movement of ETH and stablecoins from the exchanges. As it stands, ETH 2.0 deposit contracts contain over 15 million ETH, with some 4 million wrapped Ethereum is held in wrapped Ethereum deposit contract. Now, Web3 infrastructure development and investment firm Jump Trading holds over 2 million of those ETH tokens and is the third largest holder of ETH in the ecosystem. Now, Binance, Kraken, Bitfinex, and Gemini wallets feature in the largest ETH balance list, while the 
Arbitrum Layer 2 roll-up bridge also holds a significant amount of Ethereum. And as explained by the analysts in correspondence with Cointelegraph, the percentage increase of ETH held in smart contracts can be seen as an indicator of ETH flowing into various DeFi products. These include decentralized exchanges, staking contracts, as well as custody services. Now, the recent collapse of FTX may have also led to fears of users holding assets with third-party custodians, which they should have, right? Like centralized exchanges, the analysts highlighted the reality that the safety of funds held on exchanges may not be guaranteed. Fact, as quoted them here, there is an amplification for the quote, not your keys, not your coins. And this is especially important given times like this. And I want to stop right there and just point out, I mean, the obvious, and I know I may be preaching to the choir because we have a hardcore crypto fam here in the live chat. But with that being shared, only keep the crypto that you're actively trading on the exchanges on the exchange do not use a crypto exchange as your custodial service because if it goes under, you lose everything. So the smartest thing you can do is take your precious cryptocurrency off of the exchanges only if you're an active trader actively in the trenches right now should you even have any crypto on those exchanges. You feel me? Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. But with that being shared, let's continue. According to Nansen's exchange flow dashboard, jump trading stands out as an entity with significant withdrawal volumes from exchanges in comparison to deposits. He presented a number of possible reasons for jump's trade and token movements, noting the firm's exposure to liquidity hub serum tokens. And that's not good. As I heard, Bankman Freed is the engineer behind serum. Now, due to their exposure to the FTX fallout, they had to offload some tokens out of exchanges and need to liquidity in the last seven days we've seen jump trading withdrawing eth busd usdc usdt snx hft chz and cvx and various other tokens from multiple exchanges a substantial amount of eth has flowed out of a number of major exchanges over the past seven days as well 829 million dollars worth of eth departed from gemini while upbit saw 797 million of eth move from its account and 597 million of eth flowed out of coinbase while bit Next, also saw around $542 million worth of ETH withdrawn from its platform. Talk about a mass exodus, right? The past week also saw a significant amount of stable coins moved off the exchanges. Stable coins worth $294 million flowed out of Gemini, while Bitfinex saw $173 million moved off of its platform. KuCoin and Coinbase follow with $138 million and $108 million of stable coins withdrawn from the two exchanges, respectively. Now, the analysts also explained the movement of stable coins, telling Cointelegraph that outflow typically indicate users are on a sideline and capital is not flowing into the crypto space, quoting them here, perhaps the market contagion and prolonged bear market reduced the appetite for traders to be actively investing and involved in the space. Yes, 100%. Now, Nansen has played its part in delivering key insights into major ecosystem events in 2022. The blockchain analytics firm delved into on-chain data to piece together the collapse of Terra back in May of this year, and it then followed suit with a deep dive into the FTX collapse with evidence suggesting collusion between the exchange and crypto trading firm Alameda Research. Both firms were created and controlled by the scamster fraudster himself, Sam Bankman Freed. So there you have it. Exactly. So Sam Bankman Freed was receiving your precious crypto and then moving it to his company, Alameda Research, to make very risky trades. Hence why he lost tens of billions of dollars. Hence why he stepped down as the CEO. And hence why FTX filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Trust nobody. Verify everything. And don't fall for the fake altruism anymore. If someone comes out to tell you, I am the greatest person in the world. Look at all the money I give away to charities. I am so great. And he happens to be a fat vegan. Do not trust him. I think we have learned our lesson now, haven't we? And with that being shared, now let's break down another exciting story, which is breaking as the Bank of Japan has come out talking about test piloting uh, their digital yen, which all flows into accordings into a CBDC. And that's why this is so important to discuss. And so let's break it down, shall we? Despite Despite Japan's uncertainty on whether to issue a central bank digital currency, the Bank of Japan continues experimenting with a potential digital
digital yen, which seems to be the prototype. The uh, Japanese central bank has started a collaboration with three mega banks and regional banks to conduct a CBDC issuance pilot. The local news agency Nikkei reported on November 23rd, the pilot aims to provide demo experiments for the issuance of Japan's national digital currency, the digital yen, starting in spring of next year, 2023. And as part of the trial, Bank of Japan is expected to cooperate with major private banks and other organizations to detect and solve any issues related to customer deposits and withdrawals on bank accounts. According to the report, the pilot will involve testing the offline functionality of the Japan possible CBDC, targeting payments without the internet. And Japan's central bank plans to proceed with its CBDC experiment for about two years and make a decision on whether to issue a digital currency by 2026, the report notes. Now, the news comes amid countries around the globe, increasingly launching CBDC research and development initiatives, with countries like China leading the global CBDC race, which is not surprising whatsoever. And as Cointelegraph reported on November 22nd, the Reserve Bank of India is also preparing to start a retail pilot for its digital rupee in collaboration with major local banks, including the State Bank of India in December. And in mid-November, the Fed Bank of New York's Innovation Center announced the launch of a 12-week proof-of-concept CBDC pilot in partnership with banking giants like BNY Mellon, Citi, and HSBC, amongst others. While the majority of the world has been rushing to launch a CBDC, some countries like Denmark have dropped out of the digital currency race. Very interesting. And among reasons for dropping their CBDC or CBDC-related projects, the central banks listed potential difficulties for the private sector, questionable value and benefits, and other issues. And still, no central banks has ruled out of the possibility of launching a CBDC completely. So there you have it. What are your thoughts surrounding the Bank of Japan rolling out this pilot program for their CBDC? Now, I already know the elite's plans to launch these CBDCs. I've known about this for several years as that that's their way to control the population, control the money, control the people, especially when the money is digital and programmable by the central bank fraudsters themselves. You feel me? So be careful and also note that Bitcoin is the only antidote to CBDCs. So start stacking sats now while you still can and while they're still on the cheap at a tremendous discount. I mean, Bitcoin right now is cheaper than it was five years ago. So are you stacking sats and taking advantage of it? Are you seizing the moment? Let me know in the comments. With that being shared, now let's discuss this Harvard study on Bitcoin, which is quite interesting and positive for central banks. Now, a research paper published at Harvard University highlighted how the central banks can use Bitcoin to hedge against financial sanctions from fiat reserve issuers. A working paper titled Hedge and Sanctions Risk Cryptocurrency Central Bank Reserves released by Matthew Ferranti, a PhD candidate at the University Economics Department, explored the potential of Bitcoin as an alternative hedging asset for central banks to fight off potential sanctions. Now, Ferranti argued that there is merit for central banks to hold a small amount of Bitcoin, even in normal circumstances. However, However, when there is a risk of sanctions, the researcher said it makes sense to hold a large portion of Bitcoin along with their gold reserves. In the paper, the researcher also pointed out that countries that were facing risk of sanctions from the United States have been increasing their share of gold reserves much more than countries that had less sanction risks facts. Now, if these central banks cannot acquire enough gold to hedge the risk of sanctions, the researcher argued that Bitcoin reserves are an optimal alternative. And apart from this, the researcher believes that the risk of sanctions may eventually spur diversification in central bank reserves. That's right, strengthening the value of crypto as well as the precious metal gold. Now, Ferrante concluded that there are significant benefits in diversifying reserves and allocating portions to both Bitcoin and gold. And digital strategists at the Bank of America highlighted that the rise of the correlation between Bitcoin and gold is an indicator of investors' confidence in Bitcoin during the current economic downturn. And in addition, the Bank of America strategists believe that the rise of self-custody also indicates a potential decrease in sell pressure. Now, while self-custody has started to become highlighted amid the fall of the FTX exchange, some community members argued that it is not without risk. From bugs within smart contracts to loved ones accessing crypto assets after death, community members pointed out potential issues that might arise when people off to self-custody, their digital assets. Well, let's weigh the risks versus the rewards and discuss that for a moment. 
What's the risk? You lose all of your crypto. That's the biggest risk of keeping your crypto on a major exchange. It happened with FTX, literally tens of billions of dollars gone like that and then siphoned off the exchange with more shenanigans occurring behind the scenes. So that's the risk. And that's why I think it's worth educating yourself on how to self custody your assets. There's no greater thing you can do being in crypto. And tell me if this makes sense. You're using Bitcoin because you don't trust third party central bankers, right? And organizations within the government. So why would you give your crypto, which is regulated by these same evil regulators, which were in char charge of regulating FTX and Luna <laughs> before their collapse and give them the trust that they don't deserve? They don't deserve your trust. And if they don't deserve your trust, why are you taking the most pristine collateral in the world, which is Bitcoin, which is has no correlation to third parties or regulators, and then giving it to a centralized exchange so it can be regulated and it can be stolen from you? Does that make any sense whatsoever? Makes absolutely no sense and no logic to me. So absolutely self-custody your coins. If you're unwilling to self-custody your crypto, maybe you should think twice before getting into crypto, unless you just love giving corrupt politicians, uh, regulators, and owners like Bankman Freed your hard-earned cryptocurrency. So if, if that's the case, then by, all, by any means, do what you got to do. But with that being shared, now let's discuss this Sam Bankman Freed letter of him apologizing to his staff, which is very, very sad. But at the same time, we are living in a clown world. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, folks. The disgraced founder of FTX apologized to his employees in a two-page letter dispatched to his former colleagues, shedding light on the demise of his crypto conglomerate. He also mentioned the details of the collateral and liabilities the group has, calling the FTX employees his family. SPF says he froze up in the face of pressure and lost track of the most important things in commotion. Quitting him here, I didn't mean for any of this to happen, and I would give anything to be able to go back to do things over again. You were my family. I have lost that, and our old home is an empty warehouse of monitors. When I turn around, there is no one left to talk to. Yeah, sure. Despite not directly addressing allegations that FTX loaned customers' funds to its sister trading firm Alameda, which is highly illegal to cover its liabilities, Bankman Fried says he regrets his oversight failure. And the former exec also asserted that he did not realize the full extent of the margin position nor the magnitude of the risk posed by a hyper correlated crash. He's just trying to cover his arse at the end of the day, saying, oh, I didn't have any intention on scamming you when he had every intention of scamming you from the very beginning. Do not trust this fraudster whatsoever. They're cleaning him up, trying to make him seem like it was an honest mistake when that's obviously not the case, and we all know that. Bankman Freed claimed there was potential interest in billions of dollars of funding minutes after. He signed the Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the United States. Let's not forget, he also said, oh, uh, FTX US has nothing to do with FTX Global and your funds are safe, and within 24 Four hours announced filing chapter 11 bankruptcy scamming you out of more of your money let's not ever forget this uh, that sam bankman freed and ftx was an inside job working with the regulators facts he added that the remaining collateral as well as the interest from other parties could have been returned in large value to customers and saved the business from total collapse and with regards to purchasing assets from the embattled crypto exchange tron's justin sun recently said he is open to any kind of deal and that all options are on the table and the letter comes after reports of ftx group, SBF and his parents investing heavily in the Bahamas real estate surface. That's right. Again, you can't make this stuff up, folks. Bankman Freed and his parents purchased over $120 million worth of real estate in the Bahamas. They're scamsters. Also keep in mind that Kevin O'Leary, who was an ambassador for FTX, who still says he trusts Bankman Freed, he doesn't have an evil bone in his body. And when he was confronted, would you do business with him again, knowing what he's already did with defrauding all of his uh, you know, investors? And O'Leary said, yes, I would do business with him again. Again, you cannot make this stuff up, folks. It is absolutely insane that we are witnessing this. But again, his parents, Bankman Freed, they were compliance lawyers as per Kevin O'Leary shared uh, in an interview. That's why he said, I'm not scared about uh, uh, being an ambassador and investing with uh, FTX because out of all the exchanges, 
this is the safest one. Bankman Freed's parents are compliance lawyers. So if they are compliance lawyers, obviously they're trying to protect their son and make it seem like he had no ill intent when we know he had ill intent from the very beginning, was working with regulators with ill intent. They were laundering money to freaking uh, Zelensky, the dude over there uh, in the Ukraine. This smells and reeks of fraud, every element of the situation. So let's not let him get away with it. FTX was an inside job. Let the world know. And with that being shared, now let's break down the moment we have all been waiting for. This is major news coming out of El Salvador regarding their volcano bonds, which have been in discussion discussion for quite some time, but they finally rolled out the bill, which is the first critical step amid the crypto market downturn. El Salvador finally made a decisive step in the realization of its ambitious Bitcoin bonds project. The minister of the economy, Maria Heyman Breve, introduced a bill confirming the government's plan to raise $1 billion and invest them into the construction of Bitcoin City. Bitcoin City, let's freaking go. A 33-page digital securities bill dated on November 17th urges lawmakers to create a legal framework using the digital assets and public issuances by El Salvador. They should also consider all the requirements for this procedure and the obligations of issuers and asset providers. Now, the volcano bonds or Bitcoin bonds were introduced by the government of Nayib Bokele back in 2021. Thanks to Max Kaiser. So got to give credit where credit is due as Bokele has come out and thank Max Kaiser personally for introducing him to this idea. Now, the initial plan proposed issuing roughly a billion dollars of those bonds and allocating the raised funds to the construction of a Bitcoin city at the base of their volcano. Supposedly, the hydrothermal energy of the volcano would make the city a perfect crypto mining facility. Half of the raised funds would still be invested directly into the King Crypto. Now, during the last 12 months, the project has been repeatedly delayed, and at some point, its launching phase was scheduled for the beginning of March. Then it got postponed till September, only to be put off one more time due to security reasons. And according to some sources, the bill may be approved by legislators before Christmas. Paulo Adrono, Chief Technology Officer of Crypto Exchange Bitfinex, which collaborates with the government of El Salvador on the bonds project, seems to be optimistic about that time. As shared here, digital securities law will enable El Salvador to be the financial center of Central and South America. Let's freaking go. And after making Bitcoin a legal tender on September 7, 2021, El Salvador accumulated 2,301 Bitcoin worth roughly $104 million. And during the bull market, the profit from the investment was even used to build schools and hospitals. However, the country's economy continues to struggle. 77% of citizens prefer the Salvadoran government to stop spending public money on Bitcoin. That's an interesting statistic. But what are your thoughts surrounding this billion dollar bond coming into fruition and them using hydrothermal technology to basically mine Bitcoin on the low? Do you think this is bullish for Bitcoin and crypto as a whole and especially for their beautiful country of El Salvador? Let me know in the comments right down below. Now I want to share with you something very interesting as well, which is a $170,000 Bitcoin price prediction as per a uh, Elliott wave theory, which was recently shared by this analyst here, Bitcoin bull market 2019, 2022 following textbook precision wave five should peak in the low $170,000 against the upper channel line. And as we take a deeper look at this chart, as per Elliott wave theory, we can get to this uh, wave five at around 2023, which could potentially occur next year. And he also goes on to share in part two here. This is uh, the live chart. And we can actually check that out on TradingView. I'll include a link in the show notes below the video in the description. But with that being shared, I actually want to now dive into our live Q&A and welcome everyone here in the live show as this is one of my favorite sessions of the show and going live. Jim Wood, I appreciate your support. Family says so smash the like for our bud. JV, that's the greatest compliment you can give me here on the show, showing your support as it helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Simply smash the like as if it's Sam Bankman Freed's face. <laughs> you feel me? Uh, Tom T, welcome family. Bitcoin Cal in the house. Uh, bring facts. Welcome fam. Bitbud, appreciate you moderating there. Jim Wood says 170000 Let's freaking go. $500,000 in 2024. Send it. Bring it. Tom says, is Max going to buy El Salvador? Who knows? <laughs> Max is probably wealthy enough to purchase El Salvador if that's something he truly intended to purchase. Would be interesting, right? 
BitBud says the S&P 500 is reaching the 200-day average. Monday, the market drops. Well, how low do you think this market is likely to drop? Do you think by Monday, then we're likely to reach a new low for this cycle, dropping below the current low of around 15,500? Let me know in the comments below. Tom says maybe he has a secret wish to be emperor <laughs> of his own country. I don't think that would be Max's uh, secret wish uh, whatsoever. Sailing with the twins in the house. Welcome. South Africa in the building. JV, thanks again for all your input. We, your crypto family, really appreciate it, buddy. I'm just chilling, waiting for the next bear market, however long it takes. One love, one love family. That's right, because bear markets are when the biggest wealth transferences occur. You just got to be willing to have the patience. You know what I mean? Bring faxes 222,000 by this December 28th or next or next. Eventually, I will be right. Eventually, that's right. If 222,000 doesn't occur this year, which it doesn't look possible, maybe a less than a percentage chance of happening, it can potentially happen next year. I also like to point out we have some analysts, including Credible Crypto, predicting $150,000 Bitcoin price in 2023. We have Stock the Flow, which is predicting $100,000 plus between 2024, 2025. Max Kaiser still says 220,000 is in play. I know he's been calling it for quite some time. And we also have uh, who else? Samson Mao. Uh, uh, who ran for mayor of Bitcoin City or running for mayor. He also predicts a $100,000 Bitcoin price in 2023. We also have Tim Draper predicting a $250,000 Bitcoin price in 2023. So there's still many bullish analysts. However, anything can happen. And just as easy as we can uh, hit a six-figure new all-time high next year in 2023, we could remain in a crypto winter for another year until the time of the next halving in 2024, which is what it typically takes for us to get out of these bear markets uh, as per you know history has shown us. And if history rhymes, we can see something similar, not necessarily something exact as history doesn't necessarily repeat 100%. But let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments right down below. And back to some of these uh, comments here. If it drops below $3,600, the market will crash the 3000 or below. Holy moly, let's stop right there. What's the percentage, in your humble opinion, BitBud, that we can likely drop to below $4,000 per Bitcoin? What's the probability? Do you say 10%, 20%, 50%? What are your thoughts? Because I, I find it hard to believe that Bitcoin will drop below 10, but I'm also humble enough to realize that I haven't always been right, and often I'm wrong, and I also am humble enough to realize that anything can happen just as FTX collapsed, and I didn't expect that to happen this year, the second largest exchange in the world. What if the largest exchange in the world, uh, Binance, collapsed, or what if Coinbase didn't really have the reserves, or what if Genesis Lending didn't have the reserves, or what if the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust went under? There is so much catastrophe that can always potentially happen, which would be considered a black swan event that could potentially do something that none of us is expecting right now. So I'm definitely alert for all possibilities, but let's see what you have to share here. Uh, no, I meant that the S&P 500, not Bitcoin. Thank God, because you had me very scared, very scared there for a moment. Uh, Dustin says that is scary and hard to believe. 100%. I think so many people would be buying Bitcoin up you know, at those prices that it would be very, if it did even potentially happen, it'd be so short lived that most of the major exchanges would go down and you wouldn't be able to buy it at those prices. Just like we witness every time there's a new low. It's like try buying Bitcoin at the low. Good luck. <laughs> That's why we DCA, right? Uh, Bring Facts says when the vertical part of the adoption S curve hits, everyone will wish to gobble up $222,000 Bitcoin and call it a discount bet. Let's go. Well, word up. Rudy says just below 9,000 will be the bottom. Whales will force. It was 3,000 last time. Yeah, let's also stress that previous uh, cycles, we have dropped down uh, as high as like 95% correction. I think we're currently at around an 80% correction. So we still have plenty of room to go more down. If history again tends to rhyme or repeat, it's going to be quite interesting to see. But where do you think that the Bitcoin cycle high will be before the 2024 halving? Do you think we're likely to return to a new all-time high? Or do you think we're not likely to see that until after or, or during 2024. Let me know in the comments uh, below. Matthew says, if it hit 8,000, BlackRock would buy it all. Probably, you're probably right. Uh, Rudy says, don't try to catch falling knives, kids. Anytime is a good 
buy. You make a great point, especially if you're in this for the long haul. BitBud says my Bitcoin bottom is 9111. So that's $9,111. And I got to give respect to BitBud because he has been very accurate. He has actually been calling this low of around $10,000 back when Bitcoin hit an all time high of 69,000 when everyone was bullish. Uh, BitBud was bearish and just realistic with it. And as we started dropping, he's like, yo, I told you so. I told you so. So I would not be surprised if BitBud nails this as well. And we do hit a low of $9,111. But keep in mind, don't expect to buy it at that low. So if you're going to be stacking sats, get ready. Be prepared. Because like I said, when things crash, exchanges tend to go down. And a lot of shady things tend to occur. It just is what it is. Welcome to crypto, right? Matthew says, I catch every falling knife. Hope someday <laughs> it pays off. Telling guard, welcome family. Yep, everyone that buys daily will buy within a couple of percent of the bottom. Uh, Dustin says the 60s, I guess referring to the all time or the, the new high before uh, the end of this cycle. Well, I appreciate all that input and insight as I greatly appreciate that. My crypto fam, with that being shared, now for the big finish. For those just tuning in in today's show, we discussed Bitcoin may need a billion dollars or more on-chain losses before we hit a new Bitcoin price bottom. Also shared breaking news that Coinbase CEO says the exchange holds 2 million Bitcoin worth almost 40 billion dollars. We also shared that crypto awakening as researcher explains that an Ethereum exodus is occurring from the exchanges along with stable coins. And we also discussed the Bank of Japan to trial their digital yen within three mega banks and the Japanese central bank plans to make a decision on whether to issue their digital currency by 2026. And speaking of central banks, we also discussed they can use Bitcoin to fight off sanctions according to the latest Harvard research. And also read with you some of the letter from Bankman Fried, the scamster himself, to his FTX employees saying I froze up in the face of pressure, which is a sad, lame excuse, especially considering you encourage your uh, employees to invest their salary into your ish coin called FTT, which was artificially inflated and truly worth nothing. You are the ultimate scammer. So let's not pretend you scam you cared about your employees, which couldn't be any further from the truth. Also in today's show, we discussed breaking news of Nayib Bokele's government in El Salvador introducing a bill to launch the Bitcoin bonds. That's right. A new bill confirms that the government's plan to raise a billion dollars and invest them into the construction of Bitcoin City and also shared with you a $170,000 Bitcoin price prediction for 2023 as per wave five of Elliott wave theory. But where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to go next? Let me know in the comments.